Hi, hello, and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're gonna be doing a week-long reading vlog focusing on a specific author, which I'm very excited about. And that author is going to be Grady Hendrix, which I have heard so much about, and I've seen their books literally everywhere. And currently, I am actually at the end of that week. I have finished all the books, uh, and it was a fun week. So without further ado, let's dive in. Hello, happy Monday. It's our very first day of our Grady Hendrix readathon. I'm very excited. And I do actually already have two books to talk about. The first one I wanna talk about is The Final Girls Support Group because I'm not gonna be reading this one in this video. I love the concept of this book uh, and the title is pretty self-explanatory. It is basically about a support group of final girls, which if you don't know what a final girl is, it's basically like the last survivor in horror or slasher movies. On the back of the book, it actually says, in horror movies, the final girls are the ones left standing when the credits roll. They made it through the worst night of their lives, but what happens after? And that's basically what this book is about. And it's one of those rare books where while I'm reading it, I'm interested enough to enjoy my reading experience, but when I put it down or take a break, I don't care at all about picking it back up. Like, I just haven't gotten connected to the characters or to the story. There's only been a couple other books I feel like that have done that. One of them was The Paris Apartment. I just talked about that book in a recent video. And I did finish that book. It just kind of took me a while. And I feel like that's what's gonna happen with this one. I still wanna finish it. It's just gonna take me a bit of time. So hopefully I'll finish it by the end of October and I can talk about it in my October reading wrap up. But just in case I don't, because we're doing this like Grady Hendrix specific video, I wanted to kind of mention my thoughts on it so far. So that is, I guess, technically our first book, but our actual first book is gonna be My Best Friend's Exorcism. Uh, I almost said by Grady Hendrix, duh. <laughs> I did actually start this one as well. I'm like 100 pages in. And so far I am really loving this one, which I'm so excited for because Grady Hendrix is an author that I've been wanting to read since last year. And since I started this one and wasn't really loving it, I was kind of getting nervous about this whole video concept. So I'm really, really glad that I'm really loving this one. Uh, so far, what's happened so far? Oh, also a little random side note. I wanted to show you these little tabbies because this matches my book like perfectly, which is kind of insane. So uh, the side of this book has like these little stripes of color and this little set of tabs is like almost identical. <laughs> I'll link these tabs by the way. I got them off of Amazon. It came with a ton of them and I think they were only like a few bucks, which I think is a good deal. Anyway, so the first kind of like paragraph of the synopsis kind of explains what I've read so far. So it says, high school sophomores, Abby and Gretchen have been best friends since fourth grade, but after an evening of skinny dipping goes disastrously wrong, Gretchen begins to act differently. She's moody, she's irritable, and bizarre incidents keep happening whenever she's nearby. A pretty good portion of the first 100 pages is kind of the backstory of Abby and Gretchen's friendship. Uh, we get the story in fourth grade of how they met and currently where I'm at in the story is kind of like shortly after the whole skinny dipping expedition. And I'm definitely ready to keep reading. Uh, I wanted to keep reading this last night, but I, I figured I couldn't read the entire thing by myself. So far it hasn't really been scary, but I'm, I'm crossing my fingers for some spookiness. Like I wanna be kind of like on edge, you know? That's what I'm hoping for. <laughs> I'm at a point in the book where Abby is trying to communicate with Gretchen's parents and her parents are the worst. <laughs> like they're not listening. They're just hyper-focusing on completely the wrong things. How crazy would it be to like have a friend that's like acting funny and you're like trying to help her and literally, literally no one else seems to care. <laughs> Somehow Abby's parents, not Abby's parents, Gretchen's parents have gotten even worse. <laughs> Also too, a very random note, but I really love the chapter titles. They're not just like numbered, they're actually, I think, all names of songs. The back of the book actually says, a blend of teen angst, adolescent drama, unspeakable horrors, and a mix of 80s pop songs. The first chapter is Don't You Forget About Me, and then the second chapter is We Got The Beat. I actually had a PE teacher when I was like super, super little, and he used to always play songs like this, like the We Got The Beat song and I hated it, hated it so much.
Hello, good morning, welcome to Tuesday. We started off our day with a little workout, which was, uh, it felt really good. I've been doing weightlifting very casually for the last like year and a half. And literally over this past weekend, I decided to kind of take it more seriously. Basically, I decided to take on a challenge, the 75 hard challenge. Uh, if you've never heard of it, basically there's five rules that you have to follow. And I feel like it's just kind of like an overall like lifestyle challenge. If left to my own devices, I fall into laziness very easily. <laughs> so to kind of like keep myself on track with it, I decided to start posting on TikTok, which is making me very nervous, but it's been really fun so far. I've only filmed a couple of days, but like I'm already having a lot of fun with it. So I'm excited as well. And also a company called Javi reached out to me to send me some protein instant coffee. I am an avid coffee drinker. I drink literally two to three cups at least every single day. <laughs> and also, as you can see behind me, I do also take like a lot of supplements and protein powders and things like that. So I literally couldn't have concocted a better product for myself. <laughs> The first time I ever tried the Javi, I did have it completely by itself, just mixed into water. And it's basically like drinking a cup of black coffee, like no creamer, no sugar or anything like that. It has no flavoring, it's just coffee. And I actually kind of like that because it makes it so that you can kind of create your own, your own coffee. Also too, the majority of the time I do drink just black coffee plain. <laughs> I will say that like the bitter flavor of the coffee is a little bit like sharper than like a normal cup of coffee. But aside from that, it just tastes like coffee. The only thing that I was like personally worried about was the protein flavor. There's like a taste that protein can have and I really don't like that flavor. And honestly, you can't taste the protein at all. And I did kind of compare the calorie to protein ratio of the coffee to my typical protein powder and it's essentially the same thing. So that's also really nice. <laughs> Currently, I do think they only have the one like flavor, which is basically just coffee, like I said, <laughs> but they do also have coffee concentrates and they have a ton of flavors of those. And then they also have a collagen uh, creamer, which I would also be very interested to try. And I do of course have a discount code for you guys for 20% off. So if you want to try out Javi, get some money off, go ahead and click the link in my description and use the code Jensen42303. So I was gonna like get ready for the day and then film my book update, but we're just gonna do it now. We did finish My Best Friend's Exorcism and the first thing that I wanna talk about is something like in my editing brain I know you've already seen. In middle school and high school I was an avid like magazine reader and I loved doing any kind of quiz that was in those books and a lot of times they had to do with like friendship or like a crush or something like that. Like they were little cheesy kind of quizzes but they were really fun to do and the author has essentially put a couple of quiz magazine quiz like graphics into the book and I freaking love it. But also this book actually takes place in the fall of 1988, which is the year that I was born. I mean, I was drawn to the book because of the 80s style cover and just overall, like the reading experience for this book was very like nostalgic and fun for me because I did kind of grow up in this era. And then the only other tab that I have is on page 208. And that was basically because this is the first time and kind of the only time uh, that I got like creeped out while I was reading this book. There's a moment between Abby and Gretchen and it just, it was creepy. <laughs> but again, that was kind of like the only time that I got creeped out. And I will say that that is kind of like the one like negative that I have about this book, especially with it having like exorcism in the title. Like I thought it would have more like possession, I guess. <laughs> like Gretchen is possessed for the majority of the book, but I feel like it's mostly about Abby and kind of like how it's affecting her. But aside from that, honestly, I thought this was really fun. And again, because uh, I am like an 80s, 90s kid, uh, this was very nostalgic and fun for me to read as well. There's my thoughts on My Best Friend's Exorcism. Highly recommend. Now let's go ahead and get into probably my second most anticipated read for Grady Hendrix just in general, which is how to sell a haunted house. Every time I go to Barnes, this book grabs my attention, but I've just been like very patiently waiting until October to finally read it. And yeah, I'm so freaking excited. So let's actually find out what this book is about. I mean, from the title, I'm assuming it's about a haunted house, which is really all I needed to know to get the book. Uh, but let's kind of find out some more details. So it says, when Louise finds out that her parents have died, she dreads going home. She doesn't wanna leave her daughter with her ex and fly to Charleston. She doesn't wanna deal with her family home stuffed to the rafters with remnants of her father's academic career and her mother's lifelong obsession with puppets and dolls. Dolls, I feel like we can all agree, are the creepiest thing in the world. If this actually has anything to do with the puppets and the dolls, I'm probably guaranteed to be creeped out because that was like 
an actual fear of mine as a kid. <laughs> I saw Chucky as a kid and it completely traumatized me. <laughs> um, it made me like severely afraid of the dark, but then also it developed a fear of like my toys coming to life. I had this one uh, toy specifically called a Teddy Ruxpin, which was basically like a big teddy bear that you put like tapes in his back and his mouth moved and he told the story that was on the tape. Loved him before, but then I had a nightmare about him chasing me with a knife and he immediately went into the back of my closet never to be seen from again. I also had an American doll. I don't remember who got it for me, but uh, it was one of the ones, I don't know if they all have this, but its eyes would like open and close. That one I actually very vividly remember putting on the top shelf of my closet, uh, like face down on the shelf so that I couldn't see it. <laughs> Cause I just, it horrified me. Apparently my closet was like where my toys went to die. I honestly couldn't tell you what happened to either of those things. <laughs> anyway, point being, if this book has anything to do with creepy dolls, I'm gonna be scared. <laughs> so I'm actually really excited about that because I'm still waiting for a book to like really creep me out. So maybe this will be the one. Anyway, that was, a very long tangent. Back to our synopsis, it says, she doesn't want to learn how to live without the two people who knew and loved her best in the world. Most of all, she doesn't want to deal with her brother, Mark, who never left their hometown, gets fired from one job after another, and resents her success. Unfortunately, she'll need his help to get the house ready for sale because it'll take more than just some new paint on the walls and clearing out a lifetime of memories to get this place on the market. But some houses don't want to be sold and Louise and Mark's home have other plans for both of them. So, this sounds super creepy. I'm excited. It's much later in the day. I finally have been able to get a chance to start this book. And I am so excited because I'm only on page 30 and I'm already creeped the F out. <laughs> From the little bit that I've read so far, it does seem like this is gonna be about like the dolls and puppets and things. And there was just a scene that I read where the dolls were doing some creepy things. This is literally like reading my childhood fears, but I'm very excited about it. Again, also so surprised because it's only page 30. What else is in this book, you know? <laughs> also too, I have like an aesthetic thing, actually a couple things that I wanted to talk about. Uh, the first one, this book has several different parts in it. And the first one says denial and I have a little bit of a theory. So I did flip ahead to see what the next one was. And like I suspected, <laughs> the second one says anger. And then the next one is bargaining, so on and so forth. Basically this book is broken down into the stages of grief and I just, I don't know, I think stuff like that really brings a book to like another level. I just think it's so fun and just clever. I love stuff like that. So I'm here for it. Also, I'm very curious to see kind of how the contents within that part kind of correlate with that stage of grief. So very curious about that. Um, and then also the other thing that I wanted to show you is actually on the desk jacket. Uh, I was taking the desk jacket off and I noticed the author picture for this book. <laughs> look at him. <laughs> With this one picture, it single-handedly made me like this author even more. Like, you can tell he's just like a fun, sarcastic guy. Normally author pictures are very just like plain. I don't feel like you really ever get to see the author's personality in a picture. And this one, I feel like you can totally see his personality and I think that's great. And it makes me honestly want to like the books even more. Anyway, I just want to show you that because I thought it was fun. I'm gonna get back to my book now. <laughs> Unfortunately, on Wednesday, I did end up getting a migraine, so I didn't really do any filming. This is literally the only clip that I got, but I did get a lot of reading done. Also, a little side note, I made literally the best fries ever. I put chimichurri sauce and some feta on them. So good. <laughs> I've been like dreaming about them ever since, but anyway. This week has been unexpectedly busy, so I haven't been able 
to film nearly as much as I was hoping to, but as of right now, we have completely finished uh, How to Sell a Haunted House, and we have started and gotten like halfway through Horror Store. So <laughs> let's go ahead and talk about these two books, kind of wrap up this video. So again, I have finished How to Sell a Haunted House, and again, it is about not a haunted house like I originally thought, but about possessed dolls and puppets and things. And for the entire month of October, my main goal was to get like creeped out, like thoroughly don't want to read this at night, kind of creeped out by a book. This did that. <laughs> this book is about two siblings whose parents die and they kind of have to deal with their estate, their house essentially. And uh, they're trying to clear it out and get it ready to sell. But their mom was an avid puppeteer and puppet maker and also doll collector so her house is basically filled like it talked about the living room being just like filled with shelves upon shelves of dolls and things but then also the mom had a workroom where she made her puppets and things and that room is again like full of like hanging puppets so that's essentially what the book is about i also tabbed page 196 this is when like it got real crazy and it was one of those moments where when you're watching a horror movie and the lead does something stupid and you're like why are you doing that page 196 she even in the book was described as like realizing that what she was doing was probably not the smartest thing but she did it anyway and it was just like come on now and that's kind of where like some gore i guess kind of started kicking in too and uh the things that these puppets do <laughs> the first thing that happened wasn't like the most gruesome thing ever but like what it was exactly was just kind of horrifying <laughs> which is another thing that i kind of realized about greedy hendrix writing at least with this book uh he does have some gore in his books but your reaction is more of like shock because of what's actually happening versus being kind of grossed out because of all the blood and guts and things like that for me personally i like a good scary movie but when it's like super super gory i don't really like those like the chainsaw massacre is like my perfect example of that that was like the first horror movie that i watched where i was like i don't like this i like kind of that creeped out like ooh kind of feeling and i feel like when things are like overly gory it kind of takes away from that creeped out feeling so i feel like this had like a good balance of that basically is what i'm trying to get at so that's kind of i guess my thoughts on how to sell a haunted house i really really liked it now let's go ahead and get into horror store which i I almost didn't get for this video because honestly I don't like the way the cover looks also this book is a weird size but I happened to flip through it in the bookstore and needed to instantly purchase it because this is one of the most clever looking books that I have ever come across <laughs> if you've ever been to Ikea purchased anything from Ikea went to their website I feel like you'll really appreciate the aesthetics of this book and we're gonna go ahead and just do a flip through of this book because again obsessed so it opens up with a picture of the building and does it not look like an Ikea <laughs> there's even a like showroom map because the building is described very much like Ikea where the top floor has all of the display rooms and then the bottom floor is where you do all your shopping there's even a home delivery order form which I think is so cute but I think my favorite thing is actually the beginning of every chapter features a different piece of furniture and it usually does tie into the chapter somehow but the furniture that's featured gets kind of more sinister as you get deeper and deeper in the book which was really fun as well and then last not least, the cherry on top, the author photo is literally an Orsk employee badge. I literally can't get over the attention to detail in this book. 10 out of 10 as far as aesthetics and concept for this book. I thought this book was going to be about kind of like an Ikea style store, but Ikea actually exists in this like universe. This book is basically about a knockoff version of Ikea and it's called Orsk. And this book essentially follows Amy, who is an employee of Orsk. And the store that she actually works in has been having some issues lately. So every morning that the employees get there, there's broken items. Uh, there was a couch that had a suspicious, stinky substance smeared all over it. And the way the store manager decided to handle this situation, kind of figure out what's going on with his store, was to enlist Amy and another female coworker to stay overnight, all three by themselves, to basically catch whoever is doing this. Obviously, my first initial reaction was why in the heck is he enlisting two women especially because the second female co-worker they describe her I think as being older like that's how I pictured it so like what is she gonna do you know also what company in the world would let three employees stay overnight to catch a criminal essentially 
not a one. <laughs> I think the whole book is gonna be like this one overnight experience with these co-workers because it kind of gave you a little bit of a backstory about Amy as an employee, uh, but the majority of what I've read so far, which I am currently on page 130, has been kind of what's gone on so far during this like overnight stay in the Orsk building. And at the point that I'm at right now, our first kind of real paranormal thing started happening, which is actually really exciting because I feel like I didn't really get the paranormal vibe too much with my best friend's exorcism, which I was kind of surprised by. And then How to Sell a Haunted House, I thought it was gonna be about a haunted house, but again, it was about possessed dolls, which was definitely creepy, so I'm not complaining. But that being said, that kind of made me go into this one kind of feeling like, is there gonna be something else going on? And so far, it does actually feel like it's gonna be about ghosts and paranormal activity and I'm excited. Which ghosts are also something that I'm a little creeped out by. I'm not really sure that I believe in them, but it's one of those things where it's like, I don't know that I believe in it, but I'm not gonna put myself in a position to experience it, you know? Like, I'm not playing with a Ouija board. We're not doing seances. So yeah, so that being said, this is definitely getting a little creepy. I'm very excited about that because there are so many books I had plans to read this month and I feel like I haven't even gotten through half of them and the month is almost over. So uh, I was kind of losing hope that I would find some scary books, but thanks to Grady Hendrix, we have found a couple of creepy books and I'm so excited about it. <laughs> So those are all of my thoughts on the Grady Hendrix books that I've read so far and kind of my thoughts on Grady Hendrix as a writer. Three out of four books I've thoroughly enjoyed and it's not that I didn't like Final Girl Support Group, I just can't really get connected to it for some reason. I highly recommend Grady Hendrix books. So that's all that I have for today. I hope you guys have slash have had the most amazing of days and I will hopefully see you guys in my next one. Bye!